Hi. Okay, so this is the first time that I'm doing anything like this. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to start a personal blog per my individual therapist, um, kind of stating to myself and to my friends um, some of the trials and triumphs that I've been through um, as a personal journey from an addict. Um, I am an alcoholic. Um, I actually need to pull up on my days on my phone uh, how many days I've been sober. Uh, I don't currently know that this morning. Um, but um, I have recently just come out about my uh, struggles to everybody. Um, and I'm going to give a little more detail as I'm on a lot of sites on Facebook now. Uh, they help me with coping mechanisms and feeling not so alone in the world. Um, I've had quite a few people reach out to me who are actually staying interested um, in the journey of me coming and returning back home, which I have done. Um, but uh, in in the recovery process that I've been in, a lot of people aren't filled in with exactly what happened, uh, how it happened, and I am open to sharing. I have in intensive therapy, which by the way, is not just rehabilitation. Uh, rehabilitation, everybody, is not what you see on <laughs> commercials. It's not a uh, beach Malibu. You get to sit in a spa. Uh, I have very often been told <clears throat> I left on a sabbatical or um, my rehabilitation is some sort of joke kind of, because everybody makes it seem like it's, you take a vacation away from your problems and suddenly, I guess your problems go away. That's not what it is. I also on the sites have seen a lot of questions from people who aren't addicts trying to help other people who are addicted to something. Um, their question is what goes on through the mind of an addict? They can't seem to relate. They, I believe that there's a lot of tiptoe, a little, a lot of eggshell walk around what addiction is, what the struggles are. Uh, and if you're taking it seriously, which a lot of people don't, mind you, um, a lot of rehabilitation comes from the need to have to. You either have a court case against you or you have charges against you. Therefore, it's um, I really do love the judicial system and the fact that they believe that people can be re rehabilitated. And these days they're actually trying really hard um, to focus on rehabilitating people uh, in a positive way, not just sending them straight to jail. Um, not saying that that can't be a form of rehabilitation, but it shouldn't be the first form. Usually there's something going on inside of people that uh, stem or uh, underlies the cause as to why behaviors are picked up, why we pick up the drink or why we can no longer sustain it or, and I'm an alcoholic, but mind you, um, this is just my opinions. This is not a fact. This isn't based on uh, books or somebody telling me certain things. I'm going to be telling you from, um, and I'll probably title this like in into the mind of a recovering addict. I choose to call myself an addict because I believe putting anything into your body or succumbing to anything in your life too much can like in excess is an addiction. And when you become addicted to something, um, it consumes you, it consumes your life, it consumes your decisions, your thought process. It becomes <clears throat> a majority of what you are or what you need. It, it overrides the basic necessities of life to be happy and can somewhat override what your intentions were for yourself without you even being aware of it. It has a lot to do with the subconscious and the conscious mind being aware of what those are. Um, and I've been through very, very severe training um, because I'm not only interested in what this is. <laughs> I'm not stupid by any means. So let me tell you that the audience to whom this might go out to, um, nobody is um, exempt from becoming an addict or being an addict. You might not be one right now. You very well could be at some point. I believe that a lot of it, a lot of it does stem. I used to be one of those people that would watch intervention and, um, funny enough, I would always laugh and say, Oh, I'm, I don't have daddy issues. 
Um, or so what I was molested as a child and you don't see me cry being babying about, um, about my life. I'm still working two jobs and I have three beautiful kids and I've been married for longer than most people. And, um, I, I would not concede that I was of the same nature as the people on TV who are throwing big old tantrums or throwing their lives away. Um, in fact, I, uh, previous to my own addiction, I helped my cousin who had a meth addiction um, and also another family m member um, who had a, a drug addiction. Um, and I stayed away from alcohol myself until about the age of 27. Um, my mom was a bad alcoholic, uh, but she chose to self-medicate. I was very understanding of the disease, the disorder, everything that took place with her at that time. Um, also knew that she was an adult. She could make her own decisions. Um, so I was raised by an alcoholic. Um, my father also, um, alcoholic, I believe has done some drugs. He was never a substantial part of my life. I mean, I love him very much. Sorry, dad, if you're watching this, um, I love him very much, but, um, he wasn't a substantial part of my life. Um, and drugs were always well, not drugs, uh, alcohol was always present in my life from the age of six. So, um, I'm starting this today because it's been on my mind. I dream about it. I want to reach out and help other people. And I intend to do that because not only am I very intrigued with addiction, I believe that it substantially consumes a lot of population out there who either don't have the means to get help, don't understand what help can do for them, um, and I personally did not know how hard and how trying this, um, this is, uh, because I did not want it to become this much of a part of my life. Um, and, and thought that I was doing the best that I could to not have it consume my life. But there was a point when I did give up and, um, I really didn't care how much it consumed my life. And I had to really in the intensive therapy, go back to, when those moments were, relive a lot of my history, um, how this happened, why it happened, um, and be able to address uh, how to keep it from happening, not only how to keep it from happening, but how to get through the emotional pain of the things I didn't want to deal with back then, how to now relive it as if it's currently happening and cope with the feelings that I did not want to cope with then. So, um, I will go through a history of my life. I am opening the door to anybody out there who knows somebody struggling with addiction. Um, I'm going to be answering questions that I commonly read on the blog. I'm going to open them honestly, in my own opinion, um, what I feel happens to people or what has happened to me. I'm going to be able to, um, share viewpoints or, um, I want to be here so that the world doesn't doesn't believe you're alone. I know the one thing that I wish I had uh, when I had to face my demons was I felt very alone. Even though I knew people were dealing with addiction, I did not feel anybody knew what I was going through or that I had pretended to be something so strong for so long that I did not want anybody to know this about me. So how was I to go to anybody and ask or admit this um, very humiliating moment of my life? I knew I needed help. I knew I wanted help. I knew my immediate family, my children, and my husband all knew how bad it was. Um, but they were the only ones. They were living it with me every day. On the contrary, there's a lot that's going inside a human being when this happens. Um... I'm not making excuses for my behavior. Everything I did as an addict was wrong. Uh, and I did a lot of horrible things that I had to admit and confess to. Does it make me a horrible person? No. Um, shame and guilt take you over. I'm sure these are all common words that you've heard and in rehabilitations you're going to hear it. But what the actual meanings of those are and how you learn to deal every day with what type of monster you are capable of becoming what type of monster you have been in your past and still find some grasp into life to recover to the point of constantly recovering, constantly making progress and not hating yourself.